Niger seeks support for One Planet Summit initiative. Niger's NNPC's central bank tell allies they cannot help fix jet fuel prices. For accused, NNPC issues of supplies warns against panic buying. FIRS requests companies to submit certificate of acceptance on qualifying capital expenditure above 500,000 naira. Plus Hong Kong leading losses in Asia as tech stocks drag down most markets. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA, and we're reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Katim Baba Chinde. You're welcome. President Mahmoud Bari has urged the World Bank, African Development Bank, AFDB, and other partners to support the One Planet Summit initiative. He also called for the activation of the $19 billion pledge, which will be utilized for land restoration, tree planting, development of climate resilience infrastructure, and investments in small and medium-sized farms. It is my hope that the parties to this meeting, especially the World Bank, African Development Bank, and the One Planet Summit Initiative, will give us maximum cooperation in this regard and make good their pledge to support Africa's drive to address these climate challenges. What we really need to see is uh, for the Secretariat to address the programs that you have just talked to at the scale and with a sense of urgency and the partnerships that we have so that we can access the commitments that have been made by the One Planet Summit. We would like to see these pledges transformed into action on the ground. The Great Green Wall is really a source of inspiration. We have not seen something like that in other parts of the world. So it's a real sense of leadership and I hope that all partners will recognize that. France is very interested by this African initiative and we encourage the international community to support it more. I would like to reiterate the bank's commitment to working with you to achieve our collective vision of transforming the Great Green Wall initiative into a powerful investment program for regreening the Sahel and for changing the narrative of the region. The rising cost of aviation fuel from 160 to 350 naira and now 700 naira per litre seems to be grossly affecting the aviation sector. Airline operators continue, operations rather continue despite these toll on costs, but experts and passengers worry over the long-term implications of this development. Muplang Dakok reports. Aircrafts consume the most fuel of all modes of transportation. And this is no hearsay as experts in the aviation business confirm that an average aircraft consumes 2,508 liters of fuel every hour. It is a volume to worry any airline operator when the price of aviation fuel takes flight. Records reveal that the price of aviation fuel, also known as Jet A1 fuel, increased from 350 naira in March this year to now 700 naira per liter. They're using dollars to import aviation fuel, PMS, and other things. 
When I talk about subsidy, there's no subsidy on aviation fuel. Despite the scarcity and resultant high prices, airline operators have now suspended the proposed shutdown of local aviation activities in the country. The sector is still searching for a comfortable altitude for its customers and general operations. The increase in aviation fuel has resulted in hike in the price of air tickets nationwide. I am worried generally uh, about everything in Nigeria now. Uh, it's not just uh, flight tickets that is going up. The uh, price of food is going up. Actually, the price of the ticket currently has increased more than 100%. Like, I used to travel to Lagos and Akwa Ibom. Maximally, before it was 26,000, 25,000. But now, the least I paid is 50,000 naira. Data from the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has shown that Nigeria's air transport market experienced an encouraging rebound in 2021 despite COVID-19. It is a trajectory many will be curious to know if the country will sustain. The head of Nigeria's uh, state oil firm NNPC and the Central Bank Governor told the National Assembly and the country's airline association on Monday that they were unable to help with a soaring jet fuel prices. Fuel prices globally have risen sharply since Western companies began imposing a series of increasingly tight financial sanctions on Russia after its invasion of Ukraine in late February. The ripple effect has been felt sharply by already debt laden airlines who rely on imported kerosene or jet fuel that is not subsidized unlike gasoline. Now adequate fuel supply and availability are vital for economic sustainability. Efficient fuel accounts for more than 30 percent of an airline's operating expenditure. Jet fuel price is one of the factors that de determine airfares and airlines' profitability. The aviation sector is plagued with jet fuel scarcity, and this results in flights delay, rescheduling, and cancellations. Jet fuel scarcity and the escalating cost are products of multifaceted factors that are related to finance, logistics, management, and policy. What better way can this be addressed? is the focus of Business Express today. And to do justice to these issues is an aviation consultant, Gordi Ike. You're welcome to Business Express. Oh, thank you very much. And it's good to have you in the studios physically this time. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate being here. Great. Mm. Um, perhaps we start by you giving us, let's, get, let's have a sense of it, from 160 to 350, now we're, we're hearing 700 Naira per litre. Can you give us your expert opinion? What are the factors mm. responsible for this change? All right. Um, first of all, the uh, company moved from 160 to three, uh, 350 was as a result of uh, the loss of value in, 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 in uh, Naira against the dollar at the time. Um, you recall that we had a uh, you know, sharp slide at a point. You know, when N Naira began to move from 500 and then shot up to 570 and almost uh, got to 600. Uh -huh. So, um, shortly after that, um, uh, the invasion of uh, Ukraine started. Now, you need to understand that uh, all the jet fuel and the rest of them that we've been importing from Europe, we are actually coming from Russia. Russia supplied all of them, mm. uh, but um, a whole lot of us here didn't know the um, the business game, you know, you know, going on at the time. Yeah. And so, um, uh, when uh, invasion took place, and NATO nations and uh, United States of America imposed sanctions against Russia, and of course, especially the NATO nations, um, uh, uh, kind of cut off importation of. Uh, um, uh, uh, kerosene Russia. and the rest of them from, mm -hmm. from Russia and that uh, uh, created um, uh, low supply. Of course you know the forces of demand and supply. When supply is more you have less mm -hmm. price and vice versa. When uh, demand is uh, more of course price goes up. Mm -hmm. So Europe doesn't have enough now for its internal consumption what, what more exporting to people and so prices you know uh, yes uh, skyrocketed in, uh, in, in in Europe as a matter of fact even within there I mean uh, energy and uh, you know uh, the, the rest of uh, things you use hydrocarbons to, uh, to, to do went up 
four times over. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what. And so uh, now importing from there, uh, their increased price, and then uh, those importers here looking for some, you know, margin of uh, profit. Now, now I shot it up from 350 to 700. And I can tell you, if nothing is done uh, quickly, I see it getting up to a thousand. Oh wow! Well, please don't yeah. say that. <laughs> well, that's the, that appears to be the trajectory, uh, you know, at the at the moment. But, um, so, what do you think? What do you think can be can be done to abate this uh, situation? Uh, okay, the truth of the matter is that there's no way airlines can make profit at the level uh, it is uh, when you just oppose it with um, the uh, airfare that they're doing now. Uh, I, I know that uh, they are doing a, a flat rate of about, uh, minimum yeah, minimum of 50,000 50. for mm. economy you know, tickets. Mm. Um, uh, at the rate they're buying uh, the jet fuel right now, they can't break even at, the, at 700. And so um, it's either they increase the price that's not sustainable because uh, any any further increase in a uh, ticket for a one-way one-hour flight right now a whole lot of nigerians can't afford them you know and and, and, and therefore that would slow down the economy and possibly shut down the economy because uh, people are going to just fold their arms and sit. There's no road to, as an alternative to, to go. Mm -hmm. There's no security on our roads. Uh, you know, even if, even if you are going to a direction that has some fair road that you can ply, a whole lot of people don't have the confidence to do so anymore because of security issues. So, so okay. government, uh, what I would recommend that government should do is um, give a period of about 90 days, uh, say three, three months, um, release licenses uh, to high uh, net worth, uh, worth individuals who can afford to import these products or, if, uh, or companies, they can uh, kind of uh, decentralize it because at the moment what we have on our hands in Nigeria is that NNPC appears to be the only one you know, doing this and then they have their agents who are uh, you know, um, uh, purchasing from them and then distributing. Uh, we should open it up, have more people to import especially directly from from Russia and so why I'm giving a why I'm recommending um, a period of three months is that if you start placing orders today there's mm -hmm. no way this product will arrive here in less than a month from uh, from Russia and then the logistics of having them distributed around the nation to be readily available around the nation will take uh, another uh, two to three weeks and so um, all those put together government should do well to subsidize. So if the airlines say that they can only break even uh, at the rate of say 120,000 Naira for one way, uh, one hour flight, then government uh, should take uh, say about uh, uh, you know 60,000 of that money in terms of subsidy. But then we have, we, we, we have some, some places, uh, I, I wish I could just, just pull up the statistics and now um, the, the charts to see that our flights, our local flights are actually expensive when you compare to some other jurisdictions. Um, well, you see, it's, it's more of uh, comparing um, apples with oranges. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's no way you're going to compare those, those kind of uh, our climate here and the factors that affect the airlines are not exactly the same as those places where you, uh, we are making this comparison. So it's just about oranges and apples as a matter of fact. We have a very unique, uh, a very special situation you know, here which uh, makes it um, difficult for our airlines to, you know, to make profit. Uh, uh, okay, they, they are collecting you know, Naira. The Naira they are collecting is busy going, the, going down in value. Yeah. The, the place you are saying that um, you know, they, 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 are, they appear to be charging less, they have currency that is stable, that's not losing value, rather it's gaining value mm -hmm. against other currencies. So mm -hmm. how are those two oranges? They are not. One is orange and the other is apple. <laughs> so, 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 so that's that's where we are. Uh, and, and, and so, um, why government must intervene in this? I, I, I can I can hear people or perceive people saying, "Well, this is private business. Why should government uh, put this money in it?" And I say, "No, you're wrong." Um, uh, uh, the economy of the nation is important to government. Had they, we had have, they shut we down. already have NNPC and CVN say they can't do that. 
Oh well, it's anarchy we are heading to. Very honestly, socio-economic anarchy. If these airlines shut down, Nigeria is as good as non-existent. Are you sure about y that? Yes, <laughs> true. The economy will just shut down and um, it will get to a point where people who cannot step out to do one thing or the other to put food on the on the farm uh, table of family those that lack the discipline to to sustain the pressure will go cuckoos go off their heads and you see a whole lot a lot of madness in the streets of nigeria <laughs> we've seen enough madness already so i would urge government to mm. consider you know getting involved uh, yes it's private business but um uh, uh you know the, the the security stability and safety of the country is also government's business and anything that can be done to have that in place should be done okay so before i let you go um i would want your opinion on the four cues that have just resurfaced in abuja and how if, if you can just cap it for us how um, we can it's, it's it's all part of the problem of what we've done to ourselves as a people and as a nation over the years. There's absolutely no way to explain to anyone in the world why our refineries are not working. Okay. You can't sustain this whole thing by importation of products because once in a while you have hiccups and you have, um, uh, you know, you, you, yeah. no matter how you schedule your your import something can just go wrong a vessel that's traveling from wherever to to nigeria may get halfway and you have huge turbulence you know uh, in in uh, right there at the high sea the the ship will stop dock somewhere that is safe until the natural phenomenon cools down and they continue and a loss of two of three days has already disrupted the, the, the program uh, that everybody has. And once that disruption takes place, you begin to find that uh, the, the availability here does not match the demand and the queues begin to build up. Mm. That's exactly what's going on. And just the same way Russia, Ukraine happened. Oh, yes. And nobody okay. expected it. Yes. But it happened and here we are. Oh. And so we should, we should be ready all the time like the Boy, Sc Boy Scout and Guest yeah, Guys. Ready. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, we'll, I will leave you on that note, Mr. Right. Gordy. Thank yeah. you for coming uh, on the you. program this morning. All right. Thank you. And you look yeah. So good this morning. Thank um, you. Congratulations to your husband. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. All right. Can okay, we move as, <laughs> and still remain uh, with the energy sector? Petroleum queues have resurfaced, as, as you heard a while back, in most petrol stations in Abuja, with motorists lamenting productive hours spent in search of petrol. Lydia Samsung reports. Bami Dele Joseph is an estate surveyor. Top on his plan for the day was to go straight to the office, but alas, he said, the more than three hours he would have deployed to productive means were lost waiting on the queue for fuel. Well, since morning I have not gone to work. I'm still here. We just suddenly woke up and found out that uh, there's a queue, every filling station is not selling, not dispensing. So we don't actually know what the problem is. He's not alone. His story resonates with Felix Chuku, a businessman. I have so many places to go. I can't be able to even achieve anything right now. Until I buy this fuel, I'll continue my journey. It is even worse for people whose business depend on petrol. Ironically, different strokes for different folks. Abu Bakr Umad is a black marketer. I was taken aback when he approached me declaring that he's a black marketer. Obviously, seen nothing wrong with his line of business. I the buy for generator to generator tank, I go turn and for gala. He says he's a shoe seller in Wusi Market. However, it is usually more profitable for him and other black market fuel dealers when there is fuel scarcity. Some of the black marketers deploy motorcycles, also known as Okada. They empty their fuel tanks to them and rejoin the queues again. Not up to a month we came out of this. So why are we back into it? The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, and the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority say they are already on top of the situation. For independent petroleum marketers, it is simply about the high cost of diesel and doing business. A lot of people cannot even fuel their trucks. They are optimistic that with a holistic approach, the queues will disappear soon. Let's now take a trip to the commodities market.
Next is our Surviving COVID-19 series as put together by Olain Kaojo. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Moses says he ventured into the world in business about 10 years ago and his experience has been really interesting in terms of returns on investment. Yeah, we're making money, but the money is not enough because of the way things are expensive these days. When it's like you make money before you know, you, you spend it without knowing what you spend it on. His business, he said, is taking another dimension in the face of COVID-19. And after the lockdown, the business is not moving as usual. You understand? Because customers these days are complaining there's no money and even though we charge them to pay, they won't be able to pay what we really want them to pay so that we can deliver the job for them. So it didn't really affect us and the business at the time is moving down. We are not moving the way it's supposed to be. This eye-opening pandemic that poses so much challenge is also affecting his business. And this made him re-strategize. After the COVID, we just raised the plan actually because the way things are not moving so we decided to like add it with another business compared to the one we're doing now inadequate power supply remains a major obstacle our work involves a, a light you can't do anything without light as you can see the generator will be running all these days and it's not really helping us it's like we've got to change the cost of the, the fuel we are wasting and other things we'll find out that what we are supposed to have achieve as our own we are no more achieving it so the government can really do about, something about this nepa thing so that at least business can move in this country surviving covid 19 series is brought to you in partnership with the central bank of nigeria despite uncertainty in the global economy nigeria's tech market is currently having a solid start in the month of may with investors increasing their bets and blue chip companies in anticipation of continued expansion in profits as investors gain 521 billion while the index hit 51,000 mark. Precisely at the close of trading on Monday, the all share index rose by 967.45 absolute points, representing an increase of 1.9% to close at 51,902.48 points. Similarly, the overall market capitalization value gained 521 naira, billion naira to close at 27.981 trillion naira. Shares in Asia Pacific fell on Tuesday. Bossade Abel reports. Most Asia markets fell on Tuesday after heavy losses overnight on Wall Street. Hong Kong listed shares of Chinese tech firms dropped, with Tencent declining 3.67%, while Alibaba also shared. The negative Hang Seng Tech Index slipped 2.05 percent. European stocks are expected to open lower on Tuesday amid a global market sell-off, prompted mainly by concerns over inflation and rising interest rates. The UK's FTSE Index is seen opening 10 points. Other stocks in the region are also seen pointing down. The lower open expected in Europe comes after regional markets fell to two month lows on Monday. US stock futures swung between positive and negative territory on Monday night after the S&P 500 fell to its lowest level in more than a year. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures were last up 107 points. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures climbed. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 1.99% down more than 12% from 52-week highs. The S&P 500 fell 3.2%. The tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite also lost. Markets in Africa have just opened this Tuesday and may turn out mixed following heavy losses in the U.S. overnight. Boss said the able Business Express. And we end the program on that note. Don't forget you can access all previous episodes on YouTube with value of feedback. So keep the comments, questions and suggestions coming in. And the program returns Wednesday at 3 p.m. My name is Leah Katung Baba Tunde. God bless Nigeria and have a wonderful day.